So I was watching some booktube today and I realized I haven't done a tag video in a while. So here you go, the literary fiction book tag. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I hope your guys' reading has been going as splendidly as mine has. I have just really enjoyed everything I've picked up lately, which has been wonderful. And I have just been reading on a tear for me. And yeah, I am so happy with my reading. So I hope you guys are doing just as well with all those books you're picking up out there. Today is tag time. I was watching booktube and I saw my friend Britta over at the second shelf, Britta Bowler that is, do the literary fiction book tag. And she had put in her link down below Eric of the Lonesome Readers Literary Fiction Book Tag. So I sort of jumped on that bandwagon and started going down that rabbit hole. And I decided, you know what? I can't stop thinking about how I would answer these questions and or what books I would answer these questions with. So I thought I would do the tag for you guys here today. Now there are eight questions on this tag. I should say the tag started, but um, was created by Jasmine over at Jasmine's Reads. I have a link to her video down below. I also have a link to uh, Britta's video and Eric's video down below if you wanna check out how they answer these questions. You've probably already watched them because they're amazing. The first question really is the most difficult Difficult question and that is how do you define literary fiction and I would say I probably don't define literary fiction when people say what do you read I usually say literary fiction but I never go beyond that term because I think it's just there is this blanket term that's sort of like all of literature all of literature in some way is literary fiction no matter if it's some sort of genre fiction as well you know if it has a mystery or it's in the sci-fi it can be just as much literary fiction i just really read fiction to be honest with you so i don't really define literary fiction i just don't know what it means to me other than it's just the books that i love because that's the title it's given that's not a great answer i know but I'll have better answers to come, I promise. Question number two is to name a novel with a brilliant character study. Now, I will say I really tried to answer these questions with books that I haven't talked about a ton on my channel um, because my gut reaction here was to go to Stoner by John Williams, but I talk about that enough. It's my favorite book of all time, so there you go. And I couldn't pick just one here. So I have two to answer this question. I know, I know, but it's my tag. I can do what I want. The first book that I think about when I think about a brilliant character study is The Pisces by Melissa Broder. Now this is the story of Lucy. Lucy is a PhD student, so probably in her late 20s, who is unable to sort of finalize her last bit of her dissertation she goes through a breakup with her boyfriend, which causes her to make the decision to come out to California to watch her, do her sister's dog while her sister is on vacation. Her sister is very attached to her dog. I understand this. But, but the book really is about Lucy and Lucy sort of in her own codependency on men, on people, on relationships, and how she meets other individuals that put her idea and her world of codependency in perspective for her. What winds up happening in this book is she meets a man at the water, at the ocean, and it is a merman, and she winds up having this sort of relationship with him. Um, I say sort of because it, at times is heart-wrenchingly hilarious and tragic at the same time. But as this is going on, this is really a study of a woman dealing with her own mental health situations and really understanding who she is at this age and if she wants to be that person and where that sort of decision-making process is leading her and whether or not she's going to be uh, able to come off the path that she is headed towards. I hope that doesn't that makes sense. I hope that makes sense because I don't want to give it away. I know that this book was not for everyone. It does have a lot of sexual um, discussion in it too. It is very affirming for sort of this idea of owning your own sexuality. 
Um, and the character is, she's sort of hard to take sometimes. But to me, she was so realistic. I knew who this woman was. I had met this woman. I saw pieces of myself in her. So to me, this was a brilliant character study of a person dealing with codependency at the highest level, at the highest level. Um, it is sort of a dark satire, so it can be very funny at times, but also very tragic. I know a lot of people loved it. I know a lot of people didn't. To me though, it is definitely worth reading. And that is The Pisces by Melissa Broder. So my second book to this question is um, Self-Portrait with a Boy by Rachel Lyon. I loved this book when I read it. This is the story of a young woman, let me see if I can get her name, Lou Ryle, who wants to become a famous photographer. One day, she takes these self-portraits of herself and she takes them in her apartment building. And one day she is taking a portrait and in the background through her window, she catches the image of a young boy falling from the roof of the building down to his death. And this becomes a, a study of what she does with that piece of art and what she does with the family of that little boy. And it, what's really interesting is this is about art and its expression and how a person wants to create art and have something to say, but sometimes that comes at the expense of the humanity of the whole situation. And her relationship actually with the mother of the young boy is really a poignant look at how someone can come into a situation with very very good intentions, but it can lead to a severe case of duplicity with the sort of conundrum that you're faced with. This woman makes choices, this young woman, that you may at times understand and at times not understand, but in the end, you you are in her, you understand her thought process, and you get how important art is to her and the sacrifices she is willing to make for her art. Um, so that's Self-Portrait with Boy by Rachel Lyon. The next question is, name a novel that has an experimental or unique writing style. And for that, I've chosen this slim little amazing book, August Nine Fog by Catherine Scanlon. Now this book, the story behind this book is one day Catherine was at a yard sale and she found this old journal from a woman in her 80s that was given to her. It was a five-year journal that was sort of de decrepit and falling apart in places, waterlogged in others. And she bought it. And for years, she's sort of obsessed with it. And what she's done in this book is she's taken snippets of that journal and created almost like a prose poem of this woman, this older woman's life through this five year period. She separates it into seasons as the woman deals not only with her own health, but the health and um, mor mortality of those around her. She deals with the interworkings of a relationship between her and her family. Um, the style is so brief and sparse, but poetic. And you know that this is based on a real person's life, but at the same time, a fictionalized account of how this has been interpreted by Catherine Scanlon. This is a slim little book, but I think about it all the time. And that is August, I'm sorry, August 9th Fog by Catherine Scanlon. And this copy by FSG is just beautiful. This little book is just gorgeous. Okay, so name a novel with an interesting structure. I'm going way back here, you guys. This is Flaubert... <laughs> Flaubert's. Flaubert's Parrot. Yeah, that was me by Julian Barnes. Yep, yeah, that was me pronouncing. Good job, Russell. Um, uh, Flaubert's Parrot is literally the... I'm going to read the back because it's that crazy, but and I'll tell you how it fits this prompt. It says... Which of two stuffed parrots was the inspiration for one of Flaubert's greatest stories? Why did the master keep changing the color of Emma Bovary's eyes? And why should these minutiae matter so much to Geoffrey Braithwaite, the crink crinkly erudite doctor who is the narrator of this tour de force of style and imagination? So this reads almost like a man who is investigating the literary 
history or merit of the works of uh, Gustave Flaubert. And at points in it, there's like a chronology, a timeline that does a chapter where you sort of just get all of these facts in a row. Then at times it's almost like an, uh, a college paper or a thesis or something that you're writing for academia where there will be footnotes, whole entire sections that are really footnotes on an idea that is caught up in this um, person's mind, in this um, scholar's mind. And what it does is it paints such a vivid portrait of this man, but also his obsession with a literary master. It is so well done. This was the first Julian Barnes I read, and the one that I think really kicked me off for who he was and how he was as a writer. And I really, really loved it. It reminded me a lot of, if you guys have read Pale, Pale Fire by Nabokov, um, similar in style. In that one, it's a poem and then sort of the literary analyzation of that poem um, in the second half of it um, by a fictional sort of character. But I, I, I sort of see a connection there. But um, I really loved, um, I'm really struggling um, with Flaubert's name, Flaubert's Parrot by Julian Barnes. It's Sunday afternoon here. It's late. I'm taping. I'm, I don't know what it is. Sorry, English. Tough. Um, the next question is, name a novel that explores social themes. Now, I said for most of these books, I try to stay away from books that I've talked to a lot. But when I read this question, I could not stop thinking about Heads of the Colored People, the short story collection by Nafisa Thompson Spires, which to me is the most brilliant short story collection I have ever read in my life. And what Nafisa Thompson Spires does in this book is she really takes African-American society and looks at it from so many different angles and with such connective, connective um, tissue between the stories that you start to really understand a point of view about how she is looking at the, um, the world that African Americans live in currently in the United States. Um, I thought that this book was brilliant. I want more people to read it. The paperback is just as gorgeous as the hardback. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think enough people have picked it up. If you are a short story reader, if you're not a short story reader, please, Heads of the Colored People by Nafisa Thompson Spires. It is brilliant. I promise you will love it. The next book is Name a Novel that Explores the Human Condition. Something, a lot of things are going on in uh, Dan and I's life right now, but one of those things is I have really been thinking about growing older. And I think about what happens when we get older and how our life changes from taking care of others or taking care of ourselves to at times needed to be taken care of. I think about my parents a lot as they are getting older and things are happening. And I think about how their life is going to change. And that condition, that human condition leads me to Like a Mule Bringing Ice Cream to the Sun by Sarah Lapido Manika. This is the story of, let me get her name, Moira Da Silva, who is a 75-year-old ish, a uh, Nigerian woman living in San Francisco, independent, lives at the top of the building, all stairs, drives a fast car, does all this sort of stuff where she is just owning her own life when an accident occurs and she winds up breaking her hip and having to go into the hospital. And she has to redefine her life as for the first time, she's really going to have to rely on others for life to continue and not in that sort of she's going to die. No, she's going to survive this, but her life is not going to be the same. She's not going to have the same sort of physical ability that she had when before she broke her hip. And this book in this short little book really investigates that idea of what happens to us when something occurs, especially as we get older, when we're used to being able to lead our life one way and now we have to lead it another. And when we're used to being an independent island where all of a sudden we have to become part of sort of the people around us. I loved this book. I really do. I think the, the title is freaking brilliant. And that's Like a Mule Bringing Ice Cream to the Sun by Sarah Lapido Manika. And this was shortlisted for the Goldsmiths Prize. So this probably actually could have gone in the interesting structure category as well. Um, but what I will say is she's local. So hopefully someday I'll run into her. But I just think this book was brilliant. 
Okay, and the last question regarding a book, there's one more question after that, is name a brilliant literary hybrid genre novel. This was hard for me because I sort of think like anything that is in a genre can sort of always be literary fiction in some way, shape, or form. But when I thought I was kind of going through genre fiction and I thought mysteries came to mind, I thought about The Third Hotel by Laura Vandenberg. Um, this is the story of a woman who at the beginning, her husband has, beginning, her husband has just died. Her husband was a professor who studied film and his sort of theses or his area of expertise was horror film. And before he died, he was going to wind up going to Cuba for a horror film festival in order to sort of do research. Now, the main character has decided to go to Cuba in her husband's absence just to sort of follow through on that. And when she is there, one day she walks out of a theater and she sees her husband, her husband who she thinks and has known to be dead. And it becomes a mystery, a hunt down for her husband. Why? Is he really there? Is this really him? Also, if it is him, why did he fake his death? What was wrong with their marriage? Sort of that investigative thing. But in the same time, the literary language, atmosphere, Everything about this book is just so good. Now, the ending is super weird, and I'm not sure I understand it, but I remember finishing this book thinking it was brilliant for all of these different reasons, and it was a mystery in a lot of ways. Um, and it solved that mystery, kind of, to me. I don't know. I would love to know what you think about it if you've read it. But that is The Third Hotel by Laura Vandenberg, and I loved it. So. Last question on the list is, what genre do you wish was mixed with literary fiction more? And this was hard. This was a hard question. Um, I think that there's a lot of mystery literary fiction out there. I actually think there's a lot of science fiction literary fiction out there um, with dystopian novels. I think dystopian novels usually take a science fiction twist, but they can be very literary. Station Eleven comes to mind. Um, Severance by uh, Lee Ma comes to mind. Um, but what I really was thinking is I would love to see more fantasy literary fiction. I think it's out there. Um, I think um, oh, Doctor Strange and Mr. Norrell, I think that's the title, I apologize if I'm getting that right, by Susan Clark. That's one that has sort of a fantasy magic sort of thing to it. But just something with a little bit more of that fantasy element that turns it in, just gets a little bit more into literary fiction territory. I know that it's out there, but I think it just could be expanded upon. Um, but there's so many good books out there and they don't need to be in any category because they're just brilliant for what they are. But this is the literary fiction book tag and I had to answer all the questions and I hope you liked my answers. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I thank you so much. I couldn't do this without you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you like this book tag and I hope you come around for another one. As always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!